I've been hearing storms down by the shore. Pirates in the port of paradise. Hey, room mariners marinated, swinging one north with their heads a bigger sore. Visceral and gore in paradise. Pirates in the bay, taking what they may, iron and gold aboard, what decorates indoors, taking home decor. Please really not awesome. award more, it's the um, Pirates of Paradise! My ah! Ah! My <laughs> My great grandmother. Okay, so this morning I was talking to my mom just because that's something I do early in the morning. I've been up since about I think I woke up before twenty one today. Uh, but after a little to the roots, but before I got in the shower, I was thinking about something that she used to say, and it was, um, "This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it." And I think that is roughly equivalent to the "Who's better than me?" Uh, uh, thought that accompanies that accompanies Joey Diaz and used to accompany the Church of Hap uh, What's Happening Now. But that being said, eh, all things considered, it's a pretty good Tuesday to be alive. I hear snow is coming. Good. How are you doing, John? What's happening now? I found out that some absolute sow of a human hacksawed one of the oldest goddamn trees alive, making it one of the newest trees dead uh at the time of the <laughs> cutdown and i was real upset about it because i hey they don't call me john woods for nothing i'm like hey not for nothing uh the last dude who cored a tree died at 49 why is this dude in a documentary telling me about the tree he cut fully down i'm not i'm not i'm team people up until the point where you're hacking down the oldest bits this is true I, uh, my bad. I connected to my Wi-Fi, and I think you lost me in there for a sec. Oh, that's but good. it was all great. I, I know that one tree, Pando, that's a clonal colony organism. Like it's like rhizom, it's like rhizomatic, and it shoots up from a distinct root system. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are very, very large mycological, um, or I'm sorry, that might not be the term. Mycelial might be the term. Mycelial networks. Yeah, uh, underground. Sense. I forget what the term for those are called, I but my serial networks, micro those, I mean, those micro rhizome. <laughs> no, those those sorts of organisms are really interesting. In that, I was listening to. Oh, I was watching um, an Isaac Arthur video because I've been binging. Those are some of the things I'm binging, and he mentioned that photosynthesis is under one percent efficient, and I was like, oh, right, and then I thought for a second. Oh, oh, right. And so I am also via him familiar with the idea that if you were a hyper advanced civilization, you might wait closer to the heat death of the universe when the entire universe is much colder. So you can utilize the energy you have much more efficiently. Right. So there would be much less available energy, but you would be able to do much more than you would with the excessive amount of energy that there is now, let's say. That being said, it's super interesting to think about plants and I get other plants specifically because in really anything that photosynthesizes, mycelial networks are interesting, are interesting because they chemosynthesize sort of like we do, but like, ah, ah. anyway, all that being said, it, it's interesting to consider them as like low, low energy intelligent organisms that operate at a different time scale. Or oh, something. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like maybe their maybe right. our millennia is a plant week or something. That is more or less the case, um, at least with these these particular trees. Because I was just reminded of like baobabs and redwoods and all that stuff. Um, although I think the the oh the 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 most uh, interesting part to me though was that th at forty nine hundred years old or whatever. Methuselah still had seeds that were like viable. Like they, they, they found a single pine cone on the tree and they were like, oh, all hundred of these pine seeds are viable seeds. Um, and I want one of those fucking seeds, dog. Like, 
You don't understand. You don't understand. What do you think you could do? To, do you think you? Well, I don't know. What I, th- I think the, the only. I think the only. The only way to get one of them is to be like, oh no no no, me and my entire lineage were sworn to fucking protect this tree now. Mm. Like we're gonna scrap all the other plans we got going on, take care of this tree. Dude, have we talked about the atomic priesthood on the podcast? I don't believe so in those terms, but <sighs> like the. Oh, Oh, it survived really the nuclear attempt. explosion, by the way. Because it, it, it was like dude. it was like four, it was like forty miles outside of Boomtown or uh, Doomtown, whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which like, the, the, wait, like, where was you that? Know, you know the scene in like Indiana Jones, where yeah. uh, the, like the oh, one, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, where they where they set up a whole yeah. town and then go. Boom. Real yeah, thing the mock that happened. testing, like the mock testing center. Yeah, real yeah. thing that happened. Um, yeah. There was a similarly Her. old woman who was like a genealogist in like some Mormon town in Utah, I believe, or like mm-hmm. yeah, Nevada, one of those, one of those two out west. And she was like, I'm a genealogist and no one in my family's died of cancer, but now I've had so many skin cancers ever since that explosion, <laughs> ever oh. since that explosion, the gray dust. <laughs> Yeah, no, radiation is a motherfucker. Really Everybody is. who's lived on this block since then, they've all had cancer. <laughs> Yeah, oof. But the tree's still going. But it also made me think that maybe Area Fifty One is just like a nuclear priesthood in some sense. But like, uh, we don't give a fuck because there was like a national oh, yeah. park phenomenon where they were like, "Oh, we found the oldest tree," and everybody walked up to fucking hack bits off. Hmm. I yeah. I don't. Oh, to clarify to our listenership. Uh, uh, uh... Tell him, Nate. <laughs> uh, atomic priesthood is the uh, the concept that ooh, my bad, I bought my desk. Uh, oh, my sharpie fell. Uh, atomic priesthood is the concept that our nuclear waste is so hazardous and is so hazardous that we should and will be hazardous for such a long period of time that you have to tackle the very difficult problem of communicating to people, uh, uh, sentient individuals, human or otherwise. Uh, to not enter a certain area because of the lethality. And so how do you communicate that? Because the more interesting you make an archaeological site, the more the more likely it is that some curious organism is going to poke around in it. And we are familiar with tombs that have cursed inscriptions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and how are we to convey that we are talking about serious ionizing radiation as opposed to uh, mystical hoodoo? Mm-hmm. So... Atomic priests would be a lineage of individuals whose job it is to communicate the information that there's dangerous shit in the ground right here. Alternative paths for conveying this information involve the fabrication of giant spiky bits all around the area uh, in question. And there is something to be said, too, because a lot of countries will buy your nuclear waste. Like, there's a market for it. Um... The, the uh, I guess not obvious main security concern, but the, the security concern I've heard um, is just like, oh, we don't want people making dirty bombs. But they can this do that. True. They can do that anyway well, with enough. And know. also, I don't know. Like, are dirty? To what extent is making a dirty bomb from spent fissionable material possible? I, guess. I think it would be a very dirty bomb. <laughs> Yeah, I feel but like... yeah, there's there is a whole thing around like the threshold for nuclear weapons versus nuclear energy. Like you don't have to refine the uranium like quite as much for power as you do for. Oh, I guess it's whether. Oh, sure. oh dude, it's probably whether or not your um the critical mass will yield enough. Depending on the half life of the particular radioisotope and the amount of it you have. I don't know if bringing, it depends on whether or not bringing the amount you have to critical mass will produce enough energy to be the activation energy of some kind of, right? That's your threshold. Because, like, I, I don't think that, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> I'm not a nuclear scientist. <laughs> I was going to say, because I think a dirty bomb just has to work kind of like, oh, uh, we blew up all this trash. Oh, it, 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 yeah. To, to my understanding, it, it kind of functioned like those balloons we popped a year or two ago. Because I still see the 
bits and pieces of glitter everywhere every once in a while. That's really fucking funny. We're bad people. We're bad people, <laughs> but so are the people who manufactured <laughs> that. Why is that even a saleable item if it's not ever possible to be cleaned up? We're bad. The system's bad. Everyone's got work. To yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> but continue, continue. Um, um, related balloons related to nuclear waste, fissionable material, oh, yeah, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. The, the way I understood it was that it does like as long as the the the, the trash is radioactive, it doesn't necessarily even matter because you're just trying to harm people. So you can just be like, uh, we want like an elephant of we want like an elephant. Oh, yeah. it, like it, the thing yeah. that the, 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 like, t- the children's story that just blows shit into the air. We want an elephant of uh, radioactive waste that people bring no, in. It, yeah, it's just it's just very dense cancer shrapnel, I guess. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, and that's that is not good. There is, I don't know. I would actually really like. I think Atomic Priest is if I could do a job like, because hear me out. One, I feel like you get to be sort of like half a nuclear scientist, at least probably a heavy duty maintenance cat. Well, not a heavy duty maintenance cat, but like, you know, there's pro- it's probably like a pretty technical gig and I think I would enjoy it. And it's about understanding processes in a way that can be communicated over a long time. And that's cool. And also you probably have a lot of free time. <laughs> oh yes. Um, to harken back to a line I wrote slash borrowed, uh, I am Gabriel, pull out the flaming sword. Uh, there would be nothing better than protecting uh, uh, a nuclear garden of Eden. Um, because you don't even really have to protect it with your life. You could just be like, oh, you want to walk in there? Poke around in some trash? It's like the scene no, no, from... No, no. Uh, like the scene from uh, yeah, to, to harken it back to Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where you're like... Or not Raiders, uh, uh, Search for the Holy Grail, where you're just that old dude who's like... Drink some dirty water from a cup. <laughs> Drink some dirty water from a cup. That's the exact line. That listeners, that is the exact line from. Oh my gosh, from the. Uh, um, wait, what is that Indiana Jones song called again? Something, something, Holy Grail. Search for the Holy Grail. Oh, heard. Okay, but the. I don't know. My thinking is that you would be. I honestly, I'm trying to think about, like, what the real life of a new, like, how much time, I feel like it would be a lot of training. I feel like it would be a lot of training. That's what, I think one of the reasons I would think it would be a clutch gig is they would, I feel like you would have to set it up where you give someone a stipend, a place to live, you teach them a bunch of things, and then you expect them to maintain a facility, more or less, right? It's probably, oh, yeah, I I imagine that if you were an atomic priest, you're essentially becoming a nuclear waste disposal technician, like a high-level one. Like a very knowledgeable one. And that is honestly not a terrible gig. It really isn't. I was thinking the other day, related to extreme... uh, John, let's say you're like 38. You're in pretty good shape. You have a family. They're pretty adventurous. You only have one kid. That kid's like seven. An adaptable seven-year-old. Let's say... Someone's like, John, we'll give you a billion dollars to help found the Luna Colony. <laughs> Are you going to the moon? <laughs> I feel like seeing as the moon has already crashed and cracked into Earth once, the long game of that cannot be advised. But well, my, I disagree. But, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know enough about I, rocks in space. There. I think that there isn't a unified field theory to predict both sp- uh, uh, space time on the macro and my individual role simultaneously at this point. It is, John. It's very Math deep is my your weakest body. subject. <laughs> I, I, um, I think with that's a riddle. <laughs> the only reason I say the only reason I say is that. Um, the the decay, the eventual decay of the moon's orbit, I think, is outside of, like, I think it's outside of people concerns, right? Like, our species probably doesn't have to worry oh, about Oh, also, that. if you're on the moon, you're not a person at that point. You're, you're, a, moon man, you're a moon man. You're, you're, up, there on the, you're up there in the sky. I, I was thinking that I might, I don't know, being a moon man would be a pretty clutch gig. The reason I say so is, 
even if my family couldn't come with me, which would be a real bummer. I definitely like if I feel like if I had a family that I had created, that I would miss. I would miss the hell out of the family I have currently. Right. But if I had family that I created, like, ah, dude, am I not going to talk to my wife? Oh, good. Anyway, anyway, the um, the moon's close enough that you could come back. Right. It might take like, a couple days. But the moon's close enough that I could come back. Mm-hmm. Right. Like for a holiday. And I can also we could communicate pretty much in real time, like pretty much. It would just be like I for like I didn't see your notification and then you didn't see my notification, et cetera, et cetera. Also, the perks of in Paracord think, of being like, oh no 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 no, your father's the man on the moon. Take this skel- mm. take take this telescope, look up there, dude. No, man, look that up would there, actually be and you're just like. <laughs> that's, that's a really great reason to be a, to be a moon man. I would you could definitely have some sort of really big display on the moon, and it's like, what's why are you why do you need these retro reflective panels for the top of this dome? It's like, don't worry about it. I'm the moon man. Don't worry about it. Right? Like, <laughs> it's hey, just like, if you don't listen to your father, if you don't listen to me, your father is gonna hide his face from uh, our family for uh, a waxing waning minute. <laughs> Yeah, no, and it's like, hey, the the, 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 the the mirrors in orbit that shade our home, I control them directly. I'll make it I'll make it dark for eight days. <laughs> and it'll Your take father's on an very extra angry day. slash proud of you. He's really eclipsing over this. <laughs> but the reason that I think I the reason I think I would do it, the reason I think it would be advantageous is one, the moon is likely to be the first as far as like space industry goes, like space industry on another rock. The moon's the best option, right? Um, and like, it doesn't have an atmosphere that you need to get through, and it's massive enough that you can do uh, relatively large work on it, and you wouldn't have to, even if you decided to supplement the gravity, it wouldn't be all that much work to supplement the one sixth of Earth gravity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're trying to establish a serious outpost on the moon, you're effectively trying to establish a different society. And if someone's like, "Yo, dude, you seem to be both technically skilled and also like pretty good." And interacting with other people, do you want to be, do you want to be Moon Moses for a hot second? I'd be like for X billions of dollars because you have to go to another sphere. I would be like probably okay, depending on where I was on Earth, mm-hmm. depending on how I was doing. Moon Moses isn't the worst. Um, I feel like in a in a future society as well, where where you could probably Django fat the situation, where you're like, oh no, it doesn't it doesn't matter. We'll keep all we'll keep all your uh, potential kids in a tube um, and seeing that all of human reproductive effort is now uh, contained there they're in we'll make sure it's at least like one percent of the total available pool or something i don't even know that i would want that i don't even know that i would yeah, yeah. i think that who's because to like, say that there's yeah yeah, yeah in the sense true. that like you couldn't well i guess yeah it depends on your science i guess because because that could be a whole credit line but assuming so that like, they want you up there for like to do projects yeah. for them, oh um, yeah, yeah. I feel like you could also just be like also projects for me, one for you, one for me as a as a trade. Um, this is true. One for I think you, that... one for me. My kid will complete the rest. Send them up here. Hey, yeah. born with a like uh, 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 silver spoon pizza eye in his eye. <laughs> I think that this would be if you're listening. Uh, any. The, um, what am I trying to say? Private space, uh, private aerospace corporations, let's say, or groups, those with aerospace capabilities and interests. I think my price for develop, developing a lunar colony, I mean, so uh, I mean screening individuals. I, I, I mean, uh, getting a bunch of people I think won't kill each other to be on a cramp ship for a number of days to go somewhere where there aren't people or things and to make people and things there and then to keep that community running smoothly together i think my price to do that would be like a number of billion dollars and i would definitely need uh, i would need like a very serious material stipend like i really would Mm -hmm. um and i would probably i don't know i would quibble about having independent communications and open source technology because i'm not trying to get trapped on the moon you know Mm -hmm. like and also i don't i was was listening to, to a spaceman talk about space exercise and something I didn't mm-hmm. even consider is that if you exercise on the International Space Station, it'll like literally rock the boat so much that it'll like tear itself apart, and you'll be in like a gravity situation. Uh, yeah. Ooh, we're gonna yeah. be a fat moon man. 
This is, well, not necessarily. That's Bone one density. of the advantages of the permanent exoskeleton, dude. That's fair. That's, that's fair. Dog. Exactly. That's this is John. I'm telling you, I'm de- <laughs> get, 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 get to working on it before your 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 fingers become Twinkies in space. This is this is true. This is true. Currently, I have I think my fingers are at um, they're at the they're at the diameter of sausages that you should eat. They're a bad sausage diameter, which is good finger diameter. Mm-hmm. The um, if you had a permanent exoskeleton, the idea of being able to like anchor yourself and then actively make your actions more resistive. I, or I'm sorry, not actively make your actions more resistive because that's a super fucked up sentence, but you all understand what I'm saying. And is probably, I don't know. I think that that's probably the way I would try to avoid staying fat in space. Or at least if you were to ask me, how do you keep people from being fat in space? I'd be like, oh, we, we need good suits, right? We, we really do. And I think for a long time, I actually imagined that I was like, okay, my big thing is I'm going to somehow assist in getting humans to Mars, right? And I was like, how can I do that? I'm not an aerospace dude. If I could design an aspect of the space suit that they wear, that would be really cool, right? And I, 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 I thought that when I was maybe like 16 or 17. And I think that would be like an okay goal. But I think my goals have definitely increased because I think that my bar for leaving Earth, my bar for leaving Earth used to be if they would let me, right? Now my bar for leaving Earth is being paid to, is, is, is um, creating a lunar colony on, on commission. So I don't know. I don't know what that says about me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, step one to constructing this lunar base is building an inverted ziggurat as home. <laughs> As a, yeah, like you need you need a religious it's gravity, John. You, you need a religious site that everybody can fucking uh, pilgrimage to from the far side to the to uh, yeah. Exactly. No, John, we've got some kind of self assembly We've got some kind of self assembling robot. It's a little soft. It's a little hard. You know, it's it's a gooey. It's a half a gooey bot. You know, it turns it turns the Luna. It turns Luna regolith in the. It's John. These bricks weigh about a ton, but I swear you could squat them, John. You know why? One sixth of Earth's gravity plus this exoskeleton, John. The first space <laughs> crime will be a there. legend. <laughs> do you, exactly, do you remember John, when you Space Kane hucked that man. rock real heavy, real hard? It was a, it was a whole boulder. It looked like a wily e. Co- uh, coyote cartoon. <laughs> Killed his brother Abel. <laughs> man, space the only Abel. thing though is um, establishing. I'm, I, I'm not, I don't want to make establishing a colony of any kind sound difficult one, because I've never like, I've never been on a trip for months, you know what I mean? Like, like months and months and months and months, you know, like I'm not, I'm not a hardcore adventurer yet. I would say that I am like a novice proficient adventurer at the moment. And I would have to, I would have to gather a lot of skills and I think I would have to do a lot of like psychological work on myself, but I think it'd be real cool to be like, all right, this is our new clock because our day length is different right like these are our rules because there are 50 of us here and if one of us kills somebody it's going to be a real situation <laughs> if i were to like if i if i if i murder someone right it's not like the police can come get me it's not like it's not like yeah it's not like secure it's not like security organizations have the resources to arrest me if i'm in space if i've got x amount of material and if you're, if you're, because space is, it's high, because of, because of the amount of money it costs to get out of a gravity well, if you have a lot of equipment that makes itself, who's to say that I, who's to say that I can't live on the moon by myself effectively? For, so why not run on the moon? Also, is this cetera, a billion dollar body? Like who's going to expect, like people cover shit up for less. People cover shit up for less. Exactly. For much less. For much, people who aren't uh, capable of sending rockets out of out of our atmosphere and also if like if you do murder someone and you're the strongest dude on the ship who's gonna stop you from killing dudes <laughs> mm-hmm. if you like if you get like you're like man i know they're like three dudes bigger than me it's like i got them in their sleep <laughs> i'm moon god now uh, I, i'm conchu i uh, i'm the one who feeds on hearts i just <laughs> I don't know. Space crime is space crime is going to be weird. I was going to say, do you think it would shift the entire? Um, well, I, I say shift. I say shift, not replace. I think I think it may shift the uh, the whole economics of murder, because like, 
I, I would like to think that the people who've thought out space stuff have thought it out probably more than I have with more technical details. But bounty hunters are uh, uh, vast in like the, the, the sort of Star Wars development where, where, where space travel becomes fairly commonplace. Like, like at least anybody in the place is shipping yeah. on Earth. Um, mm-hmm. And so I would have to imagine that the value of human life increases uh, exponentially over space-time distances. Uh, or, yeah, high, high travel distances, right? Um, at least at the moment. At least at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it increases, but I don't think that that's a disincentive to, to murder necessarily. I think it's like a really good power play know. on Earth as, as a chimp to be like, I threw a rock into the sky and killed two birds with one stone. <laughs> the two but, birds being if you kill your bounty hunter on re-entry. Yeah. My thinking, is, my thinking is that I don't... I guess we don't have that... We don't really have super good artificial intelligence. So people who are capable of doing complex tasks and changing the complex tasks that they're doing at a moment's notice are sort of high dollar people like astronauts are expensive and so i guess you would prefer you would do as much as you could to ensure you probably spend you probably spend the money the preventative money in the screening process yeah you probably spend the preventative money in the screening process this is really interesting another isaac arthur concept i've really been i've really been blowing this man on the podcast but uh, uh, his concept is uh, related to mind control and and like, what if to board a spaceship to develop a colony, you have to undergo cognitive programming, right? And it's just to make sure that like, when you get like, you won't kill anyone when you get to the moon, right? Like, yeah. just, you will, you will not attempt to, uh, to mortally, like, you won't resort to violence as a solution to conflict with your, uh, with your coworkers. Like, what if they could like program that into you? And that was necessary because we don't have the infrastructure to do that or I like other say, emergency protocols i would i would make the okay. argument that like you would you may need to put like a physical thing there but like that that stuff's so so interesting to me it's just because like <sighs> this is true who, who do you have to find who will always follow what you tell them to you know what i mean exactly no and so that's that's one of the reasons i thought the mind control concept was so interesting because... and and at that point what, it's like you, you you almost might get into like a like a clockwork orange catch twenty two situation, where the survival skills necessary to think on the fly are are have the potential to like uh, jeopardize your most valued space asset. Exactly, and so, in fact, like what if the um, so the, I think the choice the, means the, something like. The fact no, that I'm choosing true. to abide by these rules because they abide by mm-hmm. what's true in, in the context of space survival, but should I need to fabricate yeah. my own uh, 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 survival tool, I can't be waiting on the, the time delay of, of uh, yeah. back home. Yeah, and well, the example from the Isaac Arthur video is let's say you, you're, you are a cat on a colony ship. You've been on the ship for decades, right? Your job is to go colonize an exoplanet. You are not allowed to colonize the exoplanet if there is life on it of any kind, right? And let's say at the time you've detected, determined if something is alive or not, that even if it's like a patch of algae, dog, right? If there's above a certain percentage that it is a patch of algae, you can't explore the planet. Even if, so it is, you might, you can imagine that if you, one of the reasons you might program that phrase, like you might uh, in, like etch that phrase into someone's mind or like that programming into someone's mind is because if you're on a ship for 30 years, right? John, if you, if it's like, if you're like, I'm pretty sure this is an algae. Like, let's say at this time you're like a real expert on what is and is an algae, right? You're like, I'm pretty sure this is an algae, but the computer, the, the computer whose standard it is says it is algae. Like you're like, Mm, like it says it's a 65% chance and you say it's a 45% chance and you're like, I don't know. Right. You might go down to that planet because you've been on a ship for 30 years. Right. If, if you thought that that was really bad and really unnecessary, because you know, who's to say that you won't bring an alien pathogen on board the ship that will kill everyone on the planet earth. To right? the open source so, point, it has to be verifiable independently. 
Okay. Exactly. That's that is my hesitation. Like it makes sense at the logical conclusion. That's why that's why I went on why I elaborated his whole thought experiment is because it makes sense at the logical conclusion. Because I, if I were on a ship for thirty years, fuck some algae. You know what I'm saying? But if it were my standard, I would want to make sure that even myself that I followed my rule no matter what. My rule was absolutely essential. I thought. And. But how I, I don't know I don't I don't know if I even want to I don't know if I would even want to brainwash my own self, and if I brainwash my own self, I guess I would have you would have to keep like very close track of how you did it. I don't know, man. That's a weird. It's say, weird. That's also a weird area. Said just for like, I think there's like a whole the, there was like a Seinfeld episode that got like some sort of uh, ki- uh, not kickback pushback because like uh, they were talking about like the implications of everybody will suck your dick on a boat. Just because of the implications, um, I feel yeah. like I feel like the the mind maybe maybe like like ship dynamics, there may be some docility that's just like oh we need to fucking get through this we need to get through this but you can't have like full blown nihilism I don't think unless it comes yeah. all the way back oh yeah circle what to... yeah exactly what if like for long term colonists you implemented an anti suicide programming just to make sure that they wouldn't kill themselves because oh, yeah. you really need these people, right? If you could only afford to send fifteen people to the moon or fifteen people to Mars, you know, you would make sure that none of them hang themselves and make sure that no one grabs any rocks. Yeah, you, so, you don't fabricate uh, artificial gravity just so that people can't like oh no, you, you can't do that. You gotta be more creative. You gotta be more creative. Exactly. Hey, hey, yeah, exactly. if, if you slit your wrists, somebody's gonna have to clean it up. That's that's a whole thing. That's a whole thing. Yeah, They're gonna have to thing. mop you out in, in three sixty video live on YouTube. Uh, do you know how much work it took us to engineer the, the looter soil to be farmable? Do you know how much soil you will ruin if you bleed it? <laughs> I and so <coughs> I don't do you want the first uh, plants to be blood crops? I don't think so. Yeah, because here's my thing, and this is another one of the original one of the original reasons I added the idea of uh, like a very complex sensor suite to the exoskeleton was in hopes of being able to get closer to simulating to like implanting an image in my own mind. When I say implanting, I mean like something like simulation minus the line in to like create a very like to be able to very quickly create a high resolution communicate in a high resolution way to my own self right uh and i'm thinking that there isn't because i guess what we're talking about is an irrefusable ultimatum that's programmed right so that means there is a behavioral pattern that you can't not do right or there is a behavioral pattern that you can't do and so what where is the distinction between artificially implanting a behavioral pattern that you can't not do and artificially implanting a behavioral pattern period because is that not similar to downloading like if i download the skills of a boxer won't i always punch with proper boxing form right mm-hmm. do, do you see where i'm going with this i just yeah. that's weird man i didn't realize how close i how close yeah. that idea was to this weird area i don't know the lore i wish i knew the lore a little bit better of like the like avatar like any movie where they, they put people in like uh deep cryo for like uh uh space travel but like you really could i think do some sort of simulation thing like you are a brain in a vat but you're on a spaceship type thing and it's like oh no 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 reincarnation is real in the sense that we got humanity to a point where we were we could record all of uh the possible human thoughts the full uh, expressible range of perspectives and emotions and you're going to spend your uh, entire frozen life uh, interacting and engaging with those thoughts, kind of like the Matrix, until we get to wherever it is we're going, so that you do That's... essentially have all those forms. But then, then, then you might get into like a, a, a distribution thing where it's like it's not valuable for to have that many Renaissance men on a ship because then like there there might there might be like role um, engagement or like yeah like 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 role uh, crosstalk essentially. Where like people are like, hey, we're both equally suited for that skill, um, yeah. Uh, and and so you like you might specialize from there. They could get really into like a Doctor Who situation pretty quick. I think so. This is something that just occurred to me. I think one of the applications of artificial intelligence and maybe like quantum computing as it progresses is social simulation, right? Do you remember that Black Mirror episode? I forget what it's called, but it's about I'm like not the seen dating a app. episode of Black Mirror. Okay, okay. But I, I there is an episode. Show. Oh yeah, there's an episode of Black Mirror. I will look it up in just a moment. But the premise is there is a, a 
there's a man and a woman who meet a number of times, right? There, uh, and they they get matched by this dating app, and they go on. I think it's I think it's essentially like the sort of thing is it's it's one of those uh, relationship based community sort of things. The moral of the story is at the end of the episode you find out that you were viewing a very complex simulation of a dating app of two people who happened to match with each other while they were at a party, right? And it's sort of one of the only uh, it's one of the few uplifting episodes of Black Mirror. I was thinking about the idea that if you were to create a really advanced artificial intelligence, it might one of the real uses of that might be in simulating social situations just because they are really complex. And so if you can form a sufficient psychological behavioral profile of somebody, right, of many somebodies, and then simulate their interactions using advanced AI, quantum computing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, over enough iterations, it should be the very high dollar screening process that would take place beforehand. Right. Or and I could see that also developing as something that corporations might pay for to optimize their uh, the nesting of their employees and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I was going to say you could probably I, do something yeah. similarly with just like physiology, but just be like, oh, no, we're going to give this we're going to give this tank a little bit more nutrient pump so that there's like a, a defined hierarchy when they when they exit cryo. But then you might get into a situation where the lower, oh, the fucked. lower 98 <laughs> hominids fucked. all recognize that's that this is a hierarchy that was artificially uh, implanted, and they're like, "Oh, and we will not. Uh, 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 the knowledge of the 99 shall not be." <laughs> John, John, they do this thing in. No, but that, you find that right in the beginning, so it's not even a spoiler. Basically, the way they create their hierarchies of mass-produced people is that. Like, the lower you are in the hierarchy, the less oxygen they give to your developing brain in your fetus tube, right? And for the lower, lower ones, they introduce alcohol into your in vitro, like, into your solution, into your baby breathing water. <laughs> John, it's so, it's so fucked. It's really That's fun. pretty fucked. But, I mean, it's you could really make an argument for that being better if everybody survives that process. You're like, oh no no, his Nar. lifespan's his lifespan's thirty years, mine's a thousand. It's just, hey, listen, if 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 we if we if we give him more if we give him more nutrients in the baby tube, uh, the hierarchy won't change, just his position in it. If that technology existed now, I'm not going on record to say that I would do a a a a, a violent disaggregation to the facility in which it took place, but I am saying I feel like that's what every Star Wars movie is about. Like, we are ready for that tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a I had a teacher describe to me uh, ethics as what your comp like the ethical line is. I, I guess in in regards to data presentation, I'll say in, in regards to mm -hmm. data presentation is mm -hmm. what you're comfortable explaining in plain words to a room of people. Um, yeah. Where he's like, hey, hey, what the difference between a statistical distortion and uh, an appropriate manipulation? is your ability to speak about your process yeah yeah um so i guess to the open source point but oh boy in space in space you yeah. can make many arguments you can make many arguments <laughs> and, and you can also kind of be I, like hey 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 i didn't design the system <laughs> as, as any participant in it yeah i don't know well but I yeah think I, I, I definitely should... empathize i think anybody uh should and can empathize with the um the disaggregation uh, sentiment of the of that system. Yeah, my thing is that. Oh, here's what, my original thing. What's your thing solution? Thing. Simulated meritocracy. Yeah, and, well, so here's here's what I was thinking. The reason I was thinking about this whole lunar this whole lunar colony thing, right? One, Isaac Arthur binging, right? But two, I was like, one of my long term goals, I think, would be like, if I could be like a really good mayor. You know, of like a small town, and you come to the small town, and everything's like beautiful because everyone there cares about the place they live in, right? It would be as good a place as it could be. And so, I, in my head, I roughly call that the perfect city concept. And I was thinking, I don't really give a fuck about where my perfect city is, and someone could pay me to do it on the moon. <laughs> and so, I think the the uh, one of the I I don't know. I think that it, it's an, it's important to consider this sort of thing. It's Just a shame. Uh, the yeah. Newt, Newt Gingrich as a shitty of a like just just as like I don't know 
as a person who I don't think got enough clout for talking about his moon colony and got too much heat for talking about his moon colony, I'm not mad about a moon colony, just like, can we also have health care on Earth? <laughs> yes. No, we do. We need health care on Earth more urgently than we need a lunar colony. You're, yeah, you're, you're, but, uh, you're, you're taking one small step for man. We need you to take yeah. a couple smaller steps. Yeah, we need you to take a few biker steps for all of mankind. <laughs> Listen, pilot um, medicine, the utility of that cannot be undermined on the moon. Uh, no, no, definitely not. The utility of no, following any, uh, a step-by-step -step instruction manual, mm, also valid, but... You'd be like, help, Earth, we've ran out of penicillin. <laughs> it's like, okay. I'll send you some, it'll take days. <laughs> days. <laughs> Oh, I, a, a penicillin culture. Speaking of the algae, uh, like like you just keep like you're like oh no no don't touch that puddle don't 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 jump in puddles. That's that's yeah. that, that's why moms have been uh, 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 program pr programming that into their children for forever. They're like don't play in puddles. One day we'll get to the space algae, uh, penicillin pool, and we can't have you sticking your dirty feet in there. I uh, hold on. Um... I actually, I think that you'd probably be like, this is the bacteria room. These are just all our tubes with cultures in them. This one makes penicillin. <laughs> like this one, like this one turns regolith into oxygen, et cetera. Well, actually that would be pretty inefficient. So, so I think that, you know, the, I really think I was just, I just was thinking in my head to say out loud, complex genetic, like humans, like consistent human genetic engineering uh, is probably a more a more dangerous technology to our to the cohesion of human society than artificial intelligence is. If you were talking, to, if I were speaking as Quarry the Futurist, but I was just thinking that I would really love to get a little like one of those CRISPR kits because I know of there is I forget Cat's name, but the YouTube channel is the Thought Emporium, and he modified yeast to grow spider silk protein, like the dragline silk protein, toward the end of making a, like, a natural poly, like, um, a natural polyamide, uh, 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 like, concrete or something, oh, right? Yeah. I was that, would, say, that was really interesting. Ethical, sustainable, mass-produced silk. Ooh, the next thousand years are going to feel silky smooth. I'm going to be yeah, gonna no, be no, nice. Yeah, no, truly. Uh, and so... I was thinking that's a really interesting project. It would be really neat to try and culture some form of organism for use in a project. I don't know exactly. It would actually, I think the neatest application would, for that would be in um, some kind of regenerative self-healing material. That's like, that's what I think right now, um, just because uh, it'd be cool if you could like, you know, there's some parts you have to replace, but for some underlying structure, you can just feed the system nutrients and it'll collectively repair itself. Like, oh, like if you could put a part in a bath and then wait, and then like dump a bunch of sugar in the bath and then wait, and the part would come out regenerated or something. Yes. That would be cool. That would be like, really like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a dip it plus uh, uh, the bone grow thing from uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually, man, I'm going to do some research. I, I've been, I, I, I need to do more research about biomaterials, but I need to do a lot more research about self-healing materials. They are the smart material that I know the least about. Um, well, I'm not really up to date on um, stuff like matter materials, but whatever. Uh, anyway, John? That is the material science of the soul. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I think I was going to say is, objects heal themselves. Good, good, good place to be. There, there's some really, I could send you some videos, man. There's some really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm really going to need you to watch no. if, if, we're, if we're doing our plugs. Uh, I'll, I'll, watch watch uh, Methuselah, the oldest living tree. You'll find a documentary on it. Uh, uh, to the far West. Uh, I really am like of the opinion, not of the opinion, but I, I, I do think that there's a, a strong potential that it, it could be in like area 51. And that's why we have a protected zone just because the first dude who talked about it caused so many tourists to go looking for it, that they found it and they fucked it up and they're just yeah. trying to put a bottleneck on human novelty seeking. Um, Fair. 
but yeah, I let me think if I have anything to plug. I I don't know. I guess we are we're working on that thing off the pod a little bit. Oh, we yeah. might be doing something too. Uh, watch our feeds, follow our Instagrams. Yeah, it's John Quentin Crayon. Everyone, be safe. Be leery. Uh, have a good Tuesday. Peace.